Walker. I am the Executive Vice President of the Canadian Labour Congress and also an Executive Member of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. If you go into your kits, you will see a red, Terry's holding it up, um, policy. You can have that to, to, to follow along. I'm going to ask the speakers to keep to their 10 minutes and do a brief introduction of them. To my far right, and that doesn't speak to her politics in any way, <laughs> is Mary McCarthy. Mary is an employment counselor in the province of New Brunswick and she's been in that position since 1995. She advocates for the employment of men and women of African heritage and strives to promote a healthier lens for hiring and for literacy and equity. I've known Mary for quite a few years. She was a member of the Canadian Union of Public Employees Rainbow Committee, which is our committee that deals with racialized workers and Aboriginal workers around employment equity and other issues affecting those communities. And she has also been a strong advocate for women. And she is the mother. She's what we call a member of the sandwich generation. She has an elderly mother that she takes care of. And a, a, I can't even call him a little, a little boy anymore. A young man that uh, has grown in, a, a young son that has grown into a, a beautiful young man that she's also responsible for. Beside Mary is Terry Downey. Terry is the Executive Vice President of the Ontario Federation of Labour. She's uh, the first African-Canadian to serve as an Ontario Federation officer. She is originally from Nova Scotia and has been a member of the Ontario Public Service Employees Union for many, many, many years. I'm not going to tell them how many, Terry. Uh, she's worked for the Human Rights Commission and her areas of responsibility for the Ontario Federation includes education and training, health care, human rights, social services, and other special projects. And she is working very closely with me to build uh, liaisons and partnerships between labor and community. We also have, next to her, Isabel Miller. By the way, Terry is also a member of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. I need to promote the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists every chance I get. Isabel is the human rights officer for Quebec. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, and she's a member of the Telecommunication Workers Union. She's also a director on the FTQ, QFL, which is the Quebec Federation of Labour Board, and I believe she may be the first woman of colour. I can't think of anybody in the, all the years that I've had to deal with the uh, FTQ, uh, any other woman of colour. So we've got a lot of firsts on this, on this panel. Um, she was first elected to the Executive Council of the TWU in 2006 and uh, re-elected last week. So we're oh, very, very yeah. proud of her. I'm not going to go on any more about, we were supposed to have two other panelists, Lynn Jones, which most of you probably know. Um, Lynn was not able to make it. And Tanya Ferguson, who's a youth organizer and who's been around the organizing field for a very long time. Apparently she had emergency surgery, so wasn't able to make it. Uh, today. I guess my, my first feeling is, um, and I'm hoping more will join us so that um, my comments um, that I want to make about labor and partnership with our community um, don't hold true because I've been to all kinds of other workshops this weekend, this weekend and this one is the emptiest and that shows me that there's a real problem mm -hmm. and discussion that we have to have in this room really needs to happen amongst us as black, black people. So, um, we, I've been asked, um, Marie, not Marie, sorry, Margaret, too many M's, um, to speak about the meaningful involvement of African Canadians in the Canadian and Canada's workforce. And as she puts it, we know that African Canadians, despite being highly educated, have um, some of the highest unemployment across the country. And she asked me to identify some of the causes and reasons for this. So I'm going to attempt to do that, and because of the uh, limited time, um, I tend to ramble like good Nova Scotians do, so I wrote my comments down. So if you see me uh, 
sticking to the paper. That's why, because I want to make sure I get all the comments and points that I wanted to share with you out, even though there are many, many more issues based on what's going on in the labor force and labor market that we could talk about. But we just don't have time because that would take a whole other day. Um, Marie has um, described who I am and where I come from, and I'm, I'm really happy to be and privileged to be in the position that I am because for the most part, it puts a face, a black face into the House of Labor, particularly in Ontario, particularly also in Toronto where the Federation building is housed, to see people like me working for the labor movement and talking about the issues and being um, involved in their issues, particularly in the community. And so um, within um, the Ontario Federation of Labor, we represent workers throughout this province. Each province has a Federation of Labor. Um, and um, we, well, I don't know because of all the job loss, but we used to be, and hopefully still are, over 300,000 workers in both the private and public sector um, here in Ontario. So first of all, um, I hope you are going to pay attention to the um, proposed policy statement that the African Canadian Legal Clinic has put out, because I want to state to you um, that I agree with the employment um, policy paper in the kit and the recommendations in, this, in section 11 of the document. But I want to just talk about three particular pieces of, of, of what I think needs to be done um, as a labor activist um, in terms of working with our black community. First of all, I, I, I believe, and, and, and our, the organization that I come from believes that employment equity legislation needs to be enacted not only in Ontario, but all provinces. Yeah. Secondly, I want to talk about good Canadian jobs, mm. where the work is here in Canada and produced here in Canada, and workers have jobs here in Canada. <laughs> Thirdly, I want to talk about solidarity action between labor and our black community. So labor's role has been um, uh, to fight for the rights to ensure we have good, decent jo jobs, benefits, and fairness, fairness within our workplaces. And as you know, sisters and brothers, now more than ever, um, we have to continue to do this because we're in the midst of, as you, we all know, a global crisis that none of us have seen, and clearly some of us are, have I've said it's not just a crisis, it is a depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where thousands of jobs have been lost in the labor market, um, mainly in the private sector, the manufacturing sector, which has been a hub of Ontario's mm -hmm. growth and wealth, is being decimated. And recently, in um, January of this year, 129,000 jobs were lost in Canada. Yep. And yesterday, if you were listening to, if you had time to listen to the news, um, it was reported that 82,600 jobs were lost this month alone. Yeah. And that, me, um, that uh, means um, the loss of um, unemployment rate, this, this unemployment rate is the highest since 1997, um, where the rate was, and, and it's a rate of 8.7%. For statisticians and mm -hmm. economists, that's really huge. Yeah. It really shows the magnitude of the problem. And Labour was talking about this for years. Yes. Right? Going to Parliament saying, we have an economic mm -hmm. crisis in the manufacturing sector. And the governments would not listen mm -hmm. to us. And now, sisters and brothers, it's here. And my fear, my huge fear is the impact that it's going to have on us as black workers. Because jobs are, are, are critical to the black community.